All right, my friends, welcome to episode 67 of Prof and Dev Play Games. I am the Professor Larry, and over there is Anthony the Dev. How's it going, dude? Going good. Yeah? Nice cold day up here on Washington. I saw you uh, skittering around on the, a frozen pond. I know. It's so weird. I've never done that ever. I mean, I've, ice, I've gone ice skating a couple times in my life, but that's at a enclosed skating rink. Right. It's only movies where I believe, where I said, like, oh, yeah, people go out and skate and skate on ponds. Nope. Totally a thing. And no one fell through the ice? Nope. Okay. Well, cracked just... a couple times. <laughs> what did you say? It cracked a couple times. Oh, my not like, God. Not, like, cracked, like, where you see, like, around a person, but just, like, huge cracks, like, 100 feet long. Oh, my God. Like, super deep, and it made the strangest sound when it happened. Right. Um... Yeah, like I'm, sure, get, I'm like, sure people that get live off. in like uh, the northern states and New England probably are like, why? Why is this interesting? Well, uh, yeah, it doesn't happen like, out in, in Seattle. No, no, not at all. Um, and seriously, like so many people came out. There were probably seventy-ish people there when we got there right. in the morning. My yeah. family and there's just people just walking around everywhere. There was a hockey game going on and. And this is a pond, but it's not like little pond that's like a hundred feet diameter thing. No, this is. It looked like a lake. It looked huge. It's not lake. It, that's the problem. It's like it's a very, very large pond, but it's not big enough to be a lake. Mm-hmm. So, no, it was pretty huge. It, I mean, it took. It's probably a half mile long, half mile wide, probably a mile long, a little bit less. Were there people who were skating after Pokemon? I don't think so. I could be wrong, though. Yeah, no one was out there with their phone. No, but there's not really there's, there's not really anything over here. So mm, okay, too too rural. Too rural. So it was uh, on the enough. island. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's like okay. Uh, we didn't have to drive anywhere. This is a place we can just walk to from our house, like through the the forest on the opposite of the road from our house, the back side of our house. We just walk through the other person's driveway and there's a little trail that takes five minutes to walk over to this to this uh, pond. Nice. So yeah, that was an experience. Um, walked all the way across it with my with my family in tow, sliding along. Daughter trying to ice skate. So yeah, I saw fun. the skates in your hand. Who was who was doing the skating? Uh, my daughter. Oh, cool. And by skating, we're holding her as she slides around and falls on her butt and laughs. So, <laughs> so it was good times. Um, that was an unexpected outing yesterday. Awesome. Those are sometimes the best kind. <laughs> yeah, my wife just saw other people posting pictures and were like, "Hey." We're a five-minute walk from there. Let's go. Let's, do Let's this. get out but, there. Let's go. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was an experience. Like I said, uh, you, to me, I only saw stuff like that happen in the movies. Right. So. Well, I'm glad everyone survived. <clears throat> yeah. My interesting news this week was that I happened to be, I don't know, I'm just lazy, of course. I'm at, at home, not doing any work. Um, I wasn't playing a game, though. I was... Uh, surfing Twitter for some reason and I saw a tweet from the website Cheap Ass Gamer. I don't know if you've heard of that website. I know that website. Okay, so it was a tweet that said that uh, Nintendo or NES Classics were available from Best Buy and it, it had just tweeted. So I just clicked it and went and bought one thinking this isn't going to work. Um, and it turns out it did. And it's currently in San Diego headed to me right now. I should get it I think tomorrow. Uh, we'll see if it comes tomorrow. But I went back to the website about half an hour later, and they were they were gone. Yeah, of course. Like un- I, I've I've just given up trying. Unreal. I wasn't even trying. I was just chilling I on my couch. And I just oh, I'm okay. Let's do it. I wanted one before, and I kind of waned. But if there's an opportunity to get one, I can decide yeah. if I'm going to keep it or sell it. I'll probably keep it. Um, but yeah, that was weird. So it seems like I'll have one tomorrow. That's great. Yeah, but I'm headed out of town Tuesday, so I won't be able to play it that much. <laughs> Okay, so today's show... Huh? What's that? If it's small enough, you could just 
pack it. Oh shit, that's a good idea. I might do that. I don't know if you're staying in hotels or anything, but uh, staying at a house and then a hotel. There that's you go. Not, that's not a bad idea. I might do that. Staying with our uh, friend Greg. He's in town or oh. in, he's in country, so I'm staying with him Tuesday and Wednesday night. And nice. Then, we have some other stuff up there over the weekend. My wife will be there as well. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, but that's in the future right now. We have a show and it is episode 67. We have some discussion about what you and I think Nintendo is going to talk about on January 12th. Uh, we have some news, especially a really exciting release date that we've both been waiting for you a lot longer than I, <laughs> and then we'll talk about the games that we're playing. So for the switch announcement, kind of wanted to get, um, us on record making some predictions about what we think the price, the specs, the launch lineup, the first year software, third party support, maybe even virtual console, what we think will be there. Um, just anything about the Switch you want to guess? Alright, I'm going to say price 300 Okay. I'm going to write this down I so I, I can refer I to it later. Be, I really don't think it will be lower than that. Uh huh. Okay. But uh, I assume that, that will be for the for the screen, the dock, and a set of the a pair of the controllers. Yeah, basically like the quote unquote base model. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. I'm, I'll just go off of your category. So price, I agree. I think it's three hundred bucks for the base model. I think you're gonna get upwards to a four hundred dollar model, which includes some extra Joy Cons or. Yeah. Uh, I would say extra storage, but I. I kind of think their storage is going to be SD cards. I don't know. Maybe that's wrong. Um, no, I totally, for what this is, SD card all the way. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what else. It's not going to be proprietary. No. The Vita told us why that would be yeah. a bad idea. They're using SD cards on the DS. Right. Um, it's portable, so that doesn't make sense to have any kind of a 2.5-inch like hard drive. No. It's laptop hard drive style thing. So, no. SD card pretty much is the only thing that seems logical to me yeah, on it. Yeah, right. So mini SD or SD doesn't really matter, actually. In, in my I, it's probably just going to be a normal SD. Yeah. Um, we've talked about specs, I think, to death, but do you want to just kind of reiterate what you think the specs are going to be? Uh, I think it's going to be PS3 Plus. Okay. That's the best equivalent I can... Running the, the Tegra X1 Plus yeah. something, like... It's going to be better than a PS3, but it's not going to be a PS4. Yeah. It's going to be somewhere in that middle ground. And I think I'm probably in the same area. I would say Wii U Plus. Um, I didn't really play a PS3, so I don't know what the graphics were like. But um, based on what you saw from a Wii U, I I think it's going to be a little better than that, but not much, I don't think. Um, And even if they just hit the Wii U specs for that portable thing, it would be pretty nice. Yeah. To be honest. I know some people will freak out, but... Uh, that would, they have to be careful because they don't want to limit their third party. That's the problem. That's why people would freak out. I think is that they need it's... to they need to be closer. Uh, yeah, so I think it's going to have to be more than just a Wii U. Mm-hmm. Well, so I thought the, the Wii U was... the Wii U doesn't compare to the the PS3 hardware so much. It, although that's a very hard comparison to make. Because yeah, of, PS3 is a very different architecture, but. Like, the Wii U, the PS3, what could it do? I mean, I, Uncharted, I think back to, like, what Naughty Dog was doing on the PS3, and it was still gorgeous Yeah. Game, stuff that the, the Wii U would be completely incapable of running. Right. Um, okay. So I, f- I feel like it has to be somewhere. It has to be a pretty big jump over the Wii U. Yeah. Well, that, just to get the just to get the third party, and there's a lot of third parties signed on, and I'm pretty sure those companies will want to bring their bigger franchises over. So yeah, I hope so. And I think that people who are buying those games on PS4, Xbox One, or PC even would probably buy a second version to be able to take with them on the go. Yep. And especially if they could do some sort of cloud save, which I don't know if that's going to happen, but um, maybe it's pie in the sky. But yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, in terms of the launch lineup, we haven't really talked about that. Like, what's so like, you know, the four hundred dollar model has a game pack in. Like, what's packed in with this thing? Zelda. Realistically, you think Zelda? 
No. I mean, it would be amazing. That would sell. I, w- I think that would fly off the shelves. But honestly, uh, when I look at their launch lineup, it's going to be a Wii U title redone. It's yeah. probably going to be Mario Kart Switch or Smash Brothers Switch or Splatoon. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's going to be... I think in the box is going to be Mario Kart Switch because that is one of the best-selling, if not the best-selling, Wii U game. Um, yeah. So that's just proven how popular it is. Um, and to be honest, like that game, my wife and I play that still all the time. I put more hours into that by far than any other Wii U game. So, and honestly, that one would fit with the uh, the party aspect of it. Yeah. You could, hey, here's two controllers, let's play. Right. Hey, we're on the like, yeah. When it comes down to it, that's probably the best bet, and it's probably the easiest one for them to get out, considering it's just Mario. It looks just like it's Mario Kart Eight, right? With additions and some changes, but still. Um, I think you know, speaking as a Wii U owner, that's an, that's enough for me to have like that game on the go or on the new system, but with stuff added to it. Yeah, I feel like I got my money's worth on the Wii U, so there is a significant addition to it. I know it's not going to be like a whole extra game, but um, yeah, I I think they're in a good position where they they kind of have stopped. I think they put a lot of their A team like two years ago stopped doing Wii U stuff and started pushing towards Switch. So they've got yeah. some of those kind of hidden games we don't know about, but then redoing those uh, Wii U games plus you know some of the games we Zelda for example or the 3D Mario. Yeah. Um, I do think that the 3D Mario is going to be, it's going to be packed in. Like we're, I think we're going to find out on the 12th that the 3D Mario, whatever it's called, is like day and date with the system, and there'll be a pack in with it. Really? That's my prediction. I, Not Zelda. I don't think so. It's going to be Mario. I don't, I don't think the new Mario's out at launch. I think that's a uh, launch window or fall. Uh, like a game. holiday title. Yeah, I think that's what they're going to lead on the holiday. Maybe. And with this on Thursday is just going to be the full reveal of it. Right. Finally, like explain what this thing is. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just gonna they're going to launch with Zelda in these uh, Wii U games and I, some third party uh, titles, like some ports or something. Some ports. Uh, I could totally see. Like, third-party stuff I could see coming over is, uh, we already know Stardew Valley is going to be on there. So I have a feeling that's going to be a, a major indie launch. Oh my, um, if that's so, that would be, a lot of people would buy that just because you can play it portably. Jeez. Yeah, I have a feeling like they're just going to get, I think that's going to be day and date launch. Mm, um, okay. Just because it's already out for the other consoles now. Yeah. Um, and I know that the guy who did the, the one guy who did all development is actually not doing the ports himself. Right. Like there's another company that's handling the porting, so it's uh that's not an issue. So I have a feeling it's going to be ready to go. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of other things. Uh, not likely, but would be awesome. Would be Andromeda. I think EA EA came out this week and said we don't have a Switch port in no. the plans. So I don't. Which is unfortunate. That. But, it is for sure. That sucks. But. Um, which does make me wonder, can the Switch, how well it can run Frostbite 3? Yeah. That engine. So, that's... Okay. I mean, will they just not get Frostbite 3 games? Will they not get Battlefields and Battlefronts? Yeah, I mean, that would severely limit the three uh, the third-party games they're going to get, especially yeah. from, I mean, obviously from EA, but... <clears throat> um, but, I mean, that's a... Pretty standard, pretty big, uh, cutting out of some of the bigger franchises. That's right. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what the third-party support. I think historically has not been great, so it would be. I mean, it's always because, in my view, at least the the sales of the console. I mean, Wii U sold a ton, or not? Excuse me, not the Wii U. The Wii sold a ton, so there are a bunch of kind of shitty ports and some good ports i guess uh going over to yeah the wii and then it was sales. just people just didn't the people that bought the wii the attach rate to the wii u was terrible like uh, attach rate being the number of games that per console right. sold but you're talking about was, attach rate for third party games yeah even first party games was really bad <laughs> it, discounting uh um 
the pack in game, um, uh, Wii Sports. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're talking about the Wii, not the Wii U. Not the Wii U. Oh, okay. Wii. I got, it, really got it, got horrible, it, got it, got okay. it. Horrible attach rate. Okay. The Wii so, U, I don't know. I think Wii U actually had a good attach rate. No, that's, that's, why, it's, that's why it's confusing. It didn't have a lot of systems. It just had people that right. wanted games, so they just bought the games they could. Yeah, that's why I was confused, um, because the attach rate for the Wii U for first-party games is really good. The attach rate for third-party games was abysmal. But for the Wii, yeah. of course, people bought it for the Wii Sports, and that was really all they used it for. Yeah, they're so... like, And that's where Nintendo lost a lot of third-party support, was right. actually in, in the Wii uh, era. And then they were just like, no, we're not doing Wii U. Right. So many of them just didn't even come to Wii U. They're just like, no, nope, we're not, we're not doing it. Yeah. So that's why I think this idea about the the tablet you can take away is smart because it's different enough that people might get that as a second console because they can take it away. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So just in terms of the the pack in title, you're saying Zelda. I'm saying 3D Mario. Just so we can come back next week and say who was right and who was wrong. <laughs> Um, in terms of but, like the whole, but most likely it's gonna be uh, Mario Kart Switch. Yeah, I think we, that's the one we both agree on that that's that's the easy one to to jump in there. Yeah. Um, in terms of first year software, you kind of mentioned a lot of things. I I think the same thing. Um, ports I of think, Wii U games and then some yeah. indie or third party games that have already been out yeah. that'll be ported over. So for the first year, um, I want to see, and I don't know if it'll be true. I'll Make the bold prediction of a Metroid game. Oh, dang. I hope you're right. Like a 3D? Uh, I, think, I don't know. Oh, okay. uh, maybe not even a 3D. Maybe something simpler for yeah. them to make. Mm -hmm. um, just something new Metroid right. in the first year. Um, and then my even wilder prediction, F-Zero game. Wow. What makes you think they're doing that? Or is it just like something that you want to see? It's a it's a one something I want to see, but it's a property that they just haven't done anything with in a while. Yeah. That that holds enough nostalgia because uh, they have Mario Kart as one side of the racing. F Zero is much more hardcore, very fast racing game. Right. Well, they I even feel like they made it, a shout out to uh, F Zero in Mario Kart by making that F Zero track. Yeah. It's it's something that they are well aware of that people kind of it that has a a soft spot for that there's a soft spot for that game right so i kind of feel like with this one they just with the switch my hope is that they're just going to pull out all the stops and just really mine that base of nostalgia yeah i'm hoping that they have gotten the message like seriously if they made another 2d side-scrolling mario or, or a 2d side-scrolling metroid people would be all over those games yeah and they just you know make super mario brothers 4 i know that super mario world kind of was that but like make the sequel to those games make you know yeah. super super mario world 3 yeah so i hope you're right i really do i hope that they my prediction is that they pull out all the stops for the first year where it's just like, here's all the software that we didn't put out for the Wii U. Like here's just boom, hit after hit after hit after hit. And then like, like Nothing. this is it. Like you got to buy it like, or else we're done. Like we're not yeah. going to hold stuff back. Like here's everything. Um, I hope you're right. And then third party. Um, I'm actually pretty sure we're going to see some final fantasy games on there. Like the uh, that older the, older ones, right? Like the the package of like Final Fantasy one, one through ten or what it was. One through nine. Not yeah. Nine. Okay. I don't know if they can do that for the Nintendo though. Seven was published by Sony. Yeah, that would make sense, huh? Yeah. So I'm pretty sure seven doesn't go anywhere but Sony. Right. Um, I don't think it's ever come out for Xbox. It's on PC. It's on PC. Yeah. But I don't think they put it on any other consoles than Sony consoles. But they're going to do the re-release on other consoles. But that, I guess that's technically a different game. Yes, that is a different game. Yeah, okay. Because it's, like, not... it. I mean, Sony doesn't own the rights to Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. They just own the publishing rights to the 1996 game Final Fantasy VII. Right. Um, I, I believe they still own them. I mean, if they don't, if that is time's up then sure i would not be surprised if you saw final fantasy the one through nine pack on the switch yeah um trying to think of yeah the older stuff like that uh i 
I think it's already been kind of confirmed that there's going to be a, at least one or two Dragon Quest games this mm-hmm. year mm-hmm. for the Switch, which I wonder if I, that... I have a few people that love Dragon Quest games. So I wonder if they put Dragon cool. Quest Builders on it because it's going to have a touchscreen and uh, it's doing true. pretty well on the Vita. So. Yeah. Um, we know Pokemon's on the way. Yeah, it better be. Like seriously, that's like all the stops. You got to put that on there. Yeah. Um, I was trying to think of other things. Like I said, Stardew Valley has already been said that it's going to come out for it at some point, and it will be this year. I think launch, but if it's not launch, it will be this year. There's no reason that it will hold out. Um, Do you think there'd be any sort of touchscreen optimization, or just straight console port, basically? Just console port. I yeah. don't. It doesn't. Doesn't really need. It doesn't it. really need a touchscreen. Yeah. It, it would kind of be ruined with a touchscreen. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of other. Dark Souls yeah. Three, Bandai Namco mentioned that they were gonna have that oh. game. I think. Really. Yeah. They. It was. It was a couple weeks ago. There was an article about putting Dark Souls Three on a uh, Switch, and they were. They didn't confirm it, but they didn't unconfirm it. It was. Right. It seemed like they were hinting. Interesting. Yeah. Get your torture fix on the go. Yeah. Um. I don't hear that one. I can't think of any other really big indies that would be there. Hope, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for, this is weird, I'm hoping for like a, and this is probably not going to happen because Yacht Club Games is still working on their stretch goals for Shovel Knight, but some sort of like Shovel Knight Switch version, something new. That's true. Kind of a, a relaunch on the Switch. Just, just. I could I could see a lot of indies doing relaunches on the Switch like that. Yeah. Um, historically, even if a system isn't super successful, having your game available at launch or in the launch window even for an unsuccessful platform, is really good for a de- as a developer. As right. long as it doesn't cost you a lot. Yeah. Because people are just clamoring for games at that point. Right. So, Something to play on their new shiny system. Exactly. So well, be... I, I could see a lot of indies trying to jump on board there um, and just wanting to be there at launch just so they can get a piece of that pie. Well, and it would be nice. I mean, it kind of ties into the, the next part of Virtual Console, but in some way, like, bringing it back to its roots like all of us were nintendo gamers like put all the virtual consoles on there but also like to make it like a retro machine too like having that yeah. thread i mean it's not just a retro machine but having all these you know indies that are calling back to all those nintendo games but also yeah. having those nintendo games like re-released on this thing without charging us a million dollars again that we've bought the, you know mario 3 i don't know how many times you yeah. purchased that game but uh, not that one. I mean, I think I've, I've purchased Mario three like twice. Mm-hmm. But if you talk about like Link to the Past, yeah, that one I've purchased at least six times. Right, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and I'm sure I'll purchase it if I get an NES Classic. I'll buy it again. So yeah. Uh, well, Link to the Past isn't on. Not the Link to the Past. Zelda, the original Zelda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, although a Super Nintendo, any Super Nintendo Classic or whatever, I, that's I hope that's in the works for this year. Next Christmas. Oh, that should have been in my prediction last year. Damn it. <laughs> I, that would be rad. We'll see. I'll, I'll report back on that. The... That they'll only make a hundred thousand of, and they'll sell out in two so minutes, dumb. and then you won't be getting one for well, another year. And they just got snapped up by people who just resold them. Like it wasn't people who wanted to enjoy them. They just wanted to profit. Nope. So. Which is why I'm not going to resell mine. <clears throat> um, but in terms of the virtual console, I think we're going to see the GameCube virtual console finally. Yeah. Um, I would think so. They said, so. It, they said it was going to be on Wii U, and it never came. So it better be on Switch. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. it'll be on Switch. Uh, I think they'll have the other usual virtual console stuff. NES, SNS. Yeah. Uh, but I think they'll bring over some uh, GBA games. And uh, maybe some DS games. Yeah, they have them on the Wii U, so I hope they bring them over to the Switch. I just I want them all in one place, like centralized yeah, basically, everything. Basically, that's kind of how I feel like the Virtual Console. Like if it's going to be successful, they're just going to put it all right there. Well, it's kind of yeah, like how it's piecemeal right now. Like if to buy DS games, you have to buy them on the Wii U, and if you want Super Nintendo Virtual Console, you have to buy it on a new 3DS, um, uh-huh. at least on a handheld version. So yeah, just put it in one place and make it easy. Make it a the games are tied to our account so that if we lose our switch on the bus or something like that, we don't lose our games. Yeah, that'd be good. I, I think they'll go there. Hopefully. Yeah. 
it's also Nintendo. They might not. Yeah, I know. It just I feel like they need a good project manager there, just to like I don't know, keep everything on track, but also maybe even like a PR person tell them how this stuff's gonna sell to the public. Yeah. <clears throat> um, about the launch, it, it's been rumored. I guess it was confirmed by Nintendo that it's coming out in March. Do you think it's actually coming out in March? Yeah. I okay. Do. You don't think they're going to delay it till the fall in this event? No, no. I don't think it'll be delayed. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's coming out right at the, around the same time Zelda's coming out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think there's room for a delay. It's also a good window. Like, the PS4 Pro has launched. Mm-hmm. Scorpio is not as an until the fall. Right. So they pretty much have just wide open for Nintendo to just kind of own the spring if they can do it. Right, that's true. If they can have the supply where they don't do their fake. We don't have enough. But everyone wants one. They're clamoring for it. Crap. <sighs> I love Nintendo, but they frustrate the hell out of me. It's true. It really is true. I don't know, though. Like seems to still work for them because yeah. people still talk about the stuff so well and i ended up buying it totally NES generates totally generates that continued continued buzz right that word of mouth because everyone's excited once they actually get one well and if they hype it up if they hype it up at this thing and then they i can't pre-order it i'm just i mean it's first world problems and all but i'm not gonna be very happy i don't think they'll i think i think you'll be able to pre-order it um I assume they'll give the date for pre-order on Thursday. They'll say, like, it goes on sale this date, pre-orders are start this date. Right. Um, a lot like Apple does with I heard, the yeah. iPhones. I heard some conjecture that the pre-order would be immediately after the event, but I don't buy that because it's such a weird time. Um, no. Because the 8 p.m. on Thursday is when the event is, and I don't imagine pre-orders will open up at 9. No. No, I doubt it will be at 9. I bet it will be... I could see it being the next day. I could see yeah. it being Friday. Right. So, Why yeah. don't they say something? Because when they, when they did that um, event with the NES Classic or the... the oh, what's it called? The Direct with the NES Classic, and then they had no information about pre-ordering. Um, that was weird. That so was I, weird. I hope they learn from that. Cool. Yeah, I assume that they have to. Like, but I can. It's probably launching at different times in different uh, regions. Yeah. So. Right. Um, do you think it's going to be region locked? No. That's good. I hope you're right. Is the Wii U region locked? Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. 3DS isn't region locked. Was like, it? Okay, 99% sure the Wii U is region locked. I, I bet it is, actually. I'm going to yeah. get the fact-checking squad on this. 3D, um, 3DS does yeah. not, but the Wii U is. Yep. Cool, huh? Weird. Yeah, that's such a weird choice. I know. I don't, I don't see what benefit that gave Nintendo because I don't think there were games that came out on the, the Wii U in Japan that we waited six months for in the US uh only one I can think of is the the Tokyo Mirage Sessions yeah yeah that's true but even then I, I don't know it's always weird to me because their their handhelds have never been region locked so I'm right. not really sure Maybe it won't. Maybe and they're going the cart, so maybe it won't be anymore. Yeah. Oh, like, I hope not. There's not really. Doesn't seem like a reason. Yeah. Um. All right. Any other predictions for the Switch on Thursday? I don't think so. I think that covers it all. Cool. Um. So getting right into the news. Um. First thing is just a real quick thing about the Switch. Um. The event is on Thursday, January twelfth. But the next day, Nintendo Treehouse Live is doing a bunch of demos about the games that were discussed at the event. And that's Friday, January 13th at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Easter. Yeah, so 6.30 a.m. our time, which is... I mean, uh, I'll just I'll be in a hotel, so I'll just wake up and watch it, I guess. It's, it's on YouTube as yeah. well, so it's all going to be... 
Yeah, you can watch it later. You can just watch it, yeah. Yeah. So. But it tells me, I, I wonder if, um, so this is all in English, I wonder if the Thursday event will be J- Japanese and then dubbed into English or subtitled. Yeah, I don't know. Where's the event taking place Thursday? I think it's in Japan. Is it in Japan? Yeah, yeah that I, makes sense. I, I think I read it was in Japan, so. So yeah, then it's going to, it will be subtitled or they'll have. Uh... Subbed or dubbed. Yeah, yep. dub, translated right. real time. Yeah, that's fine. As long as we get the information, I don't really care what language yeah. it's in. Um, next piece of news I'll have you take because you've been waiting for this uh, little tidbit for a long time. Uh, so it's about the time that I expected this to happen, <laughs> um, and I'm happy for no delays, but Mass Effect Andromeda, March 21st, Yay. which I believe was the day that it was rumored to be anyway. Right, from the like, Dark Horse comic the, leak. Yeah, with all the leaking stuff. So the big thing in this, they didn't delay it. They're it's coming out. So uh, it was fun reading um, Aaron Flynn, the general manager, talked how they sent home a holiday build. Yeah. Developers took home and got to play at home, kind of relaxed, probably with family, other people that just haven't seen the game. Uh, it is a, Doing that is probably a huge way of knowing if your game is done. Minus bug fixing, but just like, is the game actually something people want to play? And sounds like everyone came back from the holiday and were like, yes, we, we have the game. We're good. And it said, like, that means we can set a date now because we're ready to go. We can we can confirm this date. We know we can hit this date. Right. So right now I'm pretty sure they're just locked into bug fixing and polishing up things. So uh, I'm, I'm excited. So what happens if Thursday we find out the Switch with Zelda launches March 21st. What do you do? I play Andromeda and then get a Switch later. Cool. It's, like I guess I'd, it'd probably be the way I have to do it because I want to play Andromeda. I know Andromeda will last me probably about two, three weeks with how much I can play. Right. So ideally I could have a Switch ready for me then. Unless Nintendo sells out, then I'm screwed. Yeah, the supply. So maybe chain. I just need to now. Maybe I just need the Switch and just. But if I have the Switch, what can I just hold on to it and not play it? I don't know. Maybe. It's a conundrum. Yeah. It's such a conundrum. It's, um, a, it's a good problem to have. Yes, yeah, so it just this is the definition of first world problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. Oh no! Too many games that I want to play coming out. Oh no! I don't know what, what they do. do. This is so hard. <laughs> yeah, I. I mean. Ugh. I, I'm not as into Mass Effect as you are for as long as you have been. Um, I think I'd probably go Switch, but not too long after I'd probably pick up Andromeda. <clears throat> yeah. I gotta beat it before the new baby comes. It's true. Andromeda and Horizon and get my Switch fix. <laughs> the Switch will be able to play with a baby strapped to you. That's, so That's true. That's gonna be a good one. Yeah as you just wander wander around your uh, your complex and right walk the baby around neighborhood and you're yeah. like yep they're sleeping okay switch time yeah as I walk don't stop if I stop they'll wake up oh god All right just make sure to be mindful of cars <laughs> yep you know you'll just find your loop you'll just do the safe loop over and over yep first yeah. half when I had my first uh that house over in uh, West Seattle. Mm-hmm. I just had, I just did a loop. I could loop through the kitchen, down the hallway, turn around, come back to the living room, rinse, repeat. With your 3DS or with the kid just strapped to you walking around? Kid strapped to me and then, yeah, game <laughs> system. Nice. Phone, game, yeah. like 3DS. So, or, yeah, no, I don't think it was a 3DS at that point. Uh, DS. But, uh, yeah, uh, it passes the time. Well, I'm very and, excited. Uh, yeah, so... For the kid. Switch, I'm excited for that too, but not nearly as much as, as the much. kid. Yeah. Want that kid. Mm. Um, 
I, there's no segue between kids and the next news story. <laughs> no, there really isn't, except money, I, I guess. guess. Kids cost money. Valve earned a lot of money. This is uh, I've earned a crap ton of money. Ooh, 3.5 oh, yeah. billion. Yeah, as the revenue. Estimate. This is from Steam Spy, the right. guy who runs Steam Spy. So none of these are official. He's just using a lot of data that he's publicly pulling off of Steam of like games people own and stuff he's keeping track of. Um, and yeah. Three point five billion dollar of total revenue, and that's from three hundred and six, basically three hundred and seventy million games sold. Yep, the most were sold in, well, obviously where the sales are at December, uh, June, yeah, yep. summer and winter sales. But, yeah, the revenue numbers though, holy crap, per month. Yeah, like if you look from Quarter basically of a August to December. Oh yeah, it never a, drops below three. Right, it's a just, third of a billion each month. Crazy. Um, as a developer, the terrifying thing about this is the average minimum the, price. <laughs> average minimum price has been, but whenever you look at like, okay, median, median sales for total median sales, just over six and a half thousand copies sold. Right. That's horrible. For one median, game, right. For one game. Yeah. And median revenue being $25,000. Right. So that, uh, that uh, is so bad. So when you're planning a game, you like worst case scenario, you're thinking that's all I'm going to make. Or I'll make way less than that. Yeah. Because that's median. Yeah. That's median, right? Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> Half of them make less than that. That's right. Um. That's just... Yeah. That's kind of terrifying as a developer just how many games have come on there he also has this great graph that says more games every month and he's tracking number of games since january of 2009 to uh, november 2016 and you just look at this chart and you're just like holy shit and do you think that's because more people are getting into the development space or is it a thing like rpg maker where people are making short shitty games and just dropping them on green light uh, one there's a lot of so you see how the like, from 01 2009 to basically 07 2013 it's stayed pretty common yeah like it was hard to get games on steam uh-huh like they really curated what was on then they started green light oh that's when they started it mm. and you can see how stuff just has been flooding on there at that point and yeah a lot of it is just shovelware right like but it's not hard to get shovelware on steam like and it just basically floods the market with lots of crappy things that are pulling down sales i would say that the games that are generally good quality will sell and they'll sell higher than that medium quite quite well like everything i've looked at is like if you want to consider yourself a success on steam you sell 50,000 copies yeah that that seems to be a pretty true statement if you can't sell 50,000 copies it was a failure um so those games are the good games are still selling that but uh and you can see with steam changing their like discovery system they just did discovery update 2.0 they are working on algorithms behind the scenes, trying to like surface the good things and the things that people want to buy and pushing the shovelware out of there and yeah. down. So it just won't sell. Right. So, but this is the problem that they're trying to solve is the fact that there's now on average looking, it's going up. So 600, probably in December, seven, close to 700 games, new games in a month. So crazy. Y- you better go in uh, with some word of mouth or something to get people to look at your game. Yeah, it's so hard to find something. It's, it's hard to find a needle in the haystack. Yep. That's for sure. <clears throat> um, I highly recommend for people who are listening to us who actually like really want to know about sales and really talk about there's a guy on, um, on Twitch um, he calls it the Clark Tank on Friday. He's the one of the guys behind uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer. Oh, yeah. 
and he does a Twitch stream every Friday, and he goes over the the Steam top fifty and talks about like what's new, what's shifted, kind of his insider take on how well those games are doing, if they're how they're dropping and what they're uh, like when they're going on sale, how deep of a sale they're going on, and. I've been consistently watching it. It's a lot of really good information for people that who are interested in the like financial side of s- games, selling them, marketing them, what's good, what's bad. Um, I highly recommend him. Um, and Crypto the Necronancer has been a success, and so I feel like he's one that you could you can be like thumbs up. You can trust him for his analysis. He, it's pretty good. Will you tell us the name again? It's the Clark Tank. Oh, Clark Tank. Uh, on, okay. On Twitch. Uh, let me see. Make sure I get. I always I follow him on Twitter, and so he just links it. Yeah, it's Ryan Clark. So it's Twitch Ryan underscore Clark. Awesome. I love those kind of things where you get a lot of insight about what's going on behind the scenes of an industry. Yeah, and this is a lot of. In, you know. Yeah, um, it's really great for for developers, and I highly recommend it for any developer looking to put games out. Um, lots of good info, info there. Um, and he last week actually went over this Steam Spy article and basically spent two hours talking about this, Dang. and then talking about the fifty, the top fifty. So there's a lot of information there. Um, then you get down, you see on this, like, top 25 games by estimated revenue. Let me find that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, there we go. The starts with uh, Civ 6. Yep. Estimated $78 million. That's crazy. I mean, I, I don't that, know how much their budget was, but... Uh, probably not that much. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that covered them just fine. Um. GTA 5 made another 70, 73.5. That's just a gift that keeps on giving. That's crazy. Yeah. No, a gift that keeps on giving is no, CSGO. CSGO. Yeah, you're right. 6.7 million new owners of that game. I don't... That seems illogical to me. Uh, they just make they make it super cheap. And there you go. But there were, in 2016, there were 6.7 million people who didn't own CSGO? Maybe. <sighs> That's insane. All um, of it's insane. Everything. It is all insane. <laughs> um, Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. It's down on the top grossing. It made 31, 31 mil. million this yeah. year. That's one point, not bad. So 1.4 million new owners of Witcher 3. Now that makes yeah. sense to me. I don't know why. It just That's a, I don't know, like a really involved, in-depth game that not everyone's yeah. going to want to try. But it was cheap Maybe. enough for people to want to. Yeah. And there you go, Stardew Valley on the top revenue. Twenty just twenty four point three million. One dude. It made more than Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which sold way fewer copies. Yeah. That that one's the one that stands out to me about how few of copies it sold. And Dishonored yeah. too, to be honest. Yeah, that's true. Um I'm curious what they sold on console. Because I think they were... Uh, like primarily a console game? Not primarily, but I mean, they. It, Mankind Divided was pushed pretty hard on consoles. Yeah. But either way, I mean, they're pretty far down on the Steam list, so... Well, and the price dropped so quickly. It was You could get it for yeah. 20 bucks like a couple weeks ago. Doom? Doom totally has had a resurgence. Yeah. Up at number five for right. top revenue. So I know it started out a little slow, and then they dis- deep discounted it, and... Seems like it worked out well for that. Yeah, and they, it got down to twenty bucks several times, but it, yeah. yeah. I, mean, so. I, I feel like they timed their sales right with Doom, where when the word of mouth was just like this game is awesome, and you could get it for pretty cheap, and then people were yeah pull the trigger pretty quickly. Um, top twenty five games by new owners. Uh, the thing that surprised me is number nine and number eleven. So uh, Civ Five had more new owners in twenty sixteen than Civ Six did, <laughs> and I, I know that's because of the price. Yeah, look at the cheap. price. Yeah, the price difference. 
12 million as opposed to 78 for Civ 6 right. total revenue. So I mean it's just Civ 5 was just discounted so much. Um and then but that makes sense like I also see that a lot of people just pick up the last Civ when the new one comes out because the last one becomes cheap. Right. So I put some hours into that uh, a week ago, week and a half ago. I don't think I mentioned it on the podcast, but No. I can see why people like that game. Like it's <laughs> it's a very forward thinking game where you're like making decisions now to influence where your civilization goes in the future. So yep. you always want to see if your decisions paid off and in the meantime while you're waiting you're making more decisions and it's just a huge loop of like waiting to see what happens next. Yep, and you're always like one more turn. Let's see what happens. Yeah. One more turn. Hard to walk away. Yep. I meant to just try it out and I played it for like I don't know, an hour and a half. <laughs> yep. So I get it, and I liked it. Oh, it was fun. Yeah. And I didn't get it. I mean, I got it, and I didn't get it, you know. I figured you would actually probably like those type of games because of being a fan of history. Yeah, right. And, like, if you are a fan of history, the Civ games are, I mean, they're fictitious history, but they pull a lot from history. And you can actually set things up, and you're like, well, what if I did things this way? How would that turn out? Right. Um, A lot of what ifs. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically, Valve is making a bunch of money not actually making games, just selling them. Yeah, I was listening to a podcast today where someone said, so let's just imagine a world where everyone decides not to sell their stuff on Steam. Will that force Valve to make Half-Life 3 or episode, Half-Life 2 Episode 3 or whatever? Maybe. Yeah. Um... But that's not going to happen. So, no, I don't think so. It's the unicorn that no one's ever going to catch. <clears throat> yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, Origin will catch up. Like, if people can see me, I'm, I can't say that with a straight face. <laughs> um, well, Origin will catch up because EA, EA makes us buy our games through them. Unfortunately, <sighs> I'll still just get the disc <laughs> for the PC. Andromeda? <laughs> Maybe. Really. I probably won't, but it's still, I'm yeah. like, uh, Origin. Well, I'm 100% buying um, Andromeda on PC, and I assume yeah. the only way I'm doing that is through Origin, so. Yeah. I will be getting it on PC through Origin. Right. I much have to, but it makes me sad. So if you scroll down to the top 10 games for each month, um, something that surprised me was uh, May, June, and July, where Total War Warhammer was yep. game top game for those three months and then it was nowhere for the rest of the year like it's not even on the top 10 for august no and so this is kind of the thing because they don't i don't know how they class if he talks about how he classes dlc in here oh because they definitely made in july it had come out but i know that they put out dlcs during the fall and I know those DLCs have sold really well. But that's so not going to chart here, yeah. Okay. I don't think that sales for the total game. Because I think, really, he's just counting the base game Yeah. on sales numbers. So, yeah. And that's why it has a higher total revenue. Is I'm pretty sure... All that DLC? Yeah. Because it has 55... Almost, yeah, just under 55 million total revenue in its DLC. Another one that stood out to me was where is it at? Oh yeah, Watch Dogs 2. Just I think it's yep. just, that's a console game, but it it charted in November, hundred thousand copies, and then it's gone. So I don't know if that oh, doesn't seem like a lot. It's in December. Third. Oh shit, you're right. Sorry, missed that. Okay. So anyway. it actually it actually went continued up. It went up. Yeah, because it was getting good buzz. So that's good. Okay, that's good news. Eleven, twelve million dollars so far on Steam. So. Um, and yeah, that's one that's very, very much touted as more of a console game than a PC. Right. So. And awesome. My friend, I was telling my friend about it here too, and he wants to borrow it from me. Good. Um, and then another friend I have here played it the same time I did and just loved it as well. So good stuff. Uh, anything else from these charts that, that stick no, out? No, I think that that's it. It was just an interest. It's a very interesting, uh, piece of news because Valve is never going to say these numbers. Nah, they're themselves. not going to tell anything publicly. But now we know they're 
rich beyond belief. Yeah, well, I, we probably knew that already, but yeah. now we can really put a number on it. Um, and gives developers hope and despair at the same time. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. You're nah, in the game, I know. I'm, I'm in it. I know the realities of it. So, just you have to figure a way to navigate through all that stuff. Absolutely. Um, um, next piece of news that came out this week um, was that Conan O'Brien's Clueless Gamer is going to get its own series. Um, they're going to expand it out into a weekly thing? I don't know. but they it, were... I could only imagine it has to be weekly. Yeah. Well, and even are... weekly, they could, it could grow old quickly. Right. Like, it's a fun thing every once in a while. That's how I feel, too. And, I, I, and I'm like, the thought of it doing its own series could be really good. I mean, they... They expanded like drunk history to its own series, mm-hmm. and it works. Um, so a number of these things can be, but they're just going to have to probably switch up the formula a little bit on well, like I... what they're playing, what they're what they're doing, who's playing. Like, so I read one I... article where they are switching up the formula in that Conan O'Brien's not going to be in it. I could see that. Yeah. I could see them getting other celebrities. I mean, they've been pulling that. Right. Pulling other celebrities in pretty consistently in them for the past year and a half now on Conan. So I could totally see them just pulling in random celebrities or uh, stars who just want to do this and who are awful at games. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> or really good. It would actually be really funny if there's really good ones. The quote from the TBS president that I thought was really interesting. Uh, was where he said, quote, we've gotten to the point where video game companies are sending us their new product for us to play and make fun of. Yep. Um, you know, like the Final Fan. Did you watch the Final Fantasy? Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, you sent me that one. That's right. I sent you that one yeah. because, oh, my God. They just ripped it to shreds. <laughs> they did. And I completely understand why they would. Right. And, because... and the companies want that. Yeah. Just because people are talking about it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's great publicity. Yeah, right. Um, and really most companies and game developers can, I say most can, can take a little, take a jab here and there and laugh at themselves. Especially if it brings in money. Yeah. Because let's be honest, a lot of the games they play on there. Yeah. Are pretty stupid games overall. Like you drop someone new into video games, like play this and they'll be like, what the hell? (laughs) Final fantasy is very much that. Right. Of course, someone who's, has no history they're gonna be like this is the strangest thing i've ever seen why would someone play this i love the uh, witcher 3 one where he just got obsessed with being able to have sex in the game oh, exactly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is the best game <laughs> ever. ever oh my god it was great um so that's cool i'm looking forward to that you know it's whenever there's a new one it's like the top post on the gaming subreddits that i visit so yeah. it's it gets a lot of traction i agree i think it'll be really cool um We'll see if it comes to fruition, though. Still could be. I, I saw some other stuff that was saying that it was a it was a possibility, not a like set in stone that's going to happen. Yeah, so. I guess that makes sense. Um, last piece of news. This is something we talked about last year. Kind of um, the nominations for the Game Developers Choice Awards. Yep. Um, they're going to present them during GDC, which is yep. when is that this year? March, March first. March, yes, like. It's always the very end of February, the beginning of March. So I kind of wanted to take a look through a couple of the categories that we might have something to say about, um, like Best Debut. So the the, the nominees Ugh. for Best Debut, it's Heart Machine with Hyperlight Drifter, Campo Santo with Firewatch, Concerned Ape with Stardew Valley, Drool with Thumper, and Night School Studio with Oxenfree. So of those five, I think you feel pretty strongly about two of them. I do. <laughs> and I wonder which one you would pick. Uh, I'd probably pick Stardew. Oh, okay. Um, just from what I've said, like, it's one dude making this thing that blew up to $25 million, probably more with the console stuff. Oh, yeah. And when you talk about best, this is debut. One person out of nowhere, just like, bam, here, here's your uh, farming sim, dating sim thing that you people have been wanting for since the last harvest moon has been released right like going i want that game too i'm going to make it here it is after four years and people just throw yeah that is an incredible debut 
Um, well, probably more so more powerful to me for me as a developer than any of these other games. Yeah, just because not only what the game is, but what it means for the landscape. Yeah. And yeah. It's just, it makes me, I haven't played Thumper yet, but I played the rest of them. And it's just like that group of games is, I know we have our problems with the Firewatch ending, but that's a superb batch of games. Yes. You know, and all indie games that just, it speaks well for what's coming down the pipe. Yeah, and then if you like even the honorable mentions, Super Hot, That Dragon Cancer, Abzu, Overcooked, 1979 Revolution. Overcooked. Like, I, oh my like God. all the, like, these are really good games. It was actually a really good game for a uh, year for uh, indie debuts. So one of these days, I want to do a share play with you of Overcooked. Have you played it oh, yet? God. I haven't. Oh my God. So I can we can share play. And then that, then we can play together online, because um, okay. it's, it's basically a two-player game, and that game is absolute madness. It is such a good co-op game. Okay. Un, um, so we'll have to set it up and do a let's play. Yeah. Because it'll let's be just it. stupid dumb fun. <clears throat> um, next one I wanted to grab onto was the best mobile or handheld game. Um, so Mario Run, Clash Royale, Pokemon Go, Reigns. I don't know what that is. Um, but then Pokemon Sun and Moon. So you've got uh, two Pokemon. Rain, Reigns is a kingdom simulator, like you are a king, uh-huh. and it and it uses the swipe left or swipe right, like from Tinder. Yeah, as a mechanic uh-huh. on what you choose to do as people are coming before you, presenting their problems, Ooh. and you're trying to like balance your entire nation <laughs> as you're trying to solve these problems by swiping light, right or left. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's really funny that they made a whole game out of Tinder. So that that mechanic. So yeah, that's Reigns. So of this list, you would, I would, I'm gonna guess you'd take Sun and Moon. Probably uh, Go would be up there really high just because of uh, the innovation in Pokemon Go and what it did to the world. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and still doing. Well, in the uh, honorable mentions, we've got a couple. Um, Mini Metro, Severed, and Fire Emblem Fates, which yeah, were all really rad. I didn't know there was a Deus Ex Go. Yeah. Uh, huh. Yep. Okay. Lots, lots of stuff there. Innovation. We've got Witness, Inside, No Man's Sky, Firewatch, and Pokemon Go. I think I would probably go with Pokemon Go there. Yeah, for innovation, totally. I loaded it up finally. I I downloaded Pokemon Go. I was at a park. Uh, I biked to a park and I was reading a book and I pulled out my phone because someone texted me. I was like, oh, I should try Pokemon Go. I loaded it up, and then it said, here's a Pokemon near you, get ready to catch it. And I sat there and sat there and tried to figure out how to catch a Pokemon, and I realized I have to get up. <laughs> yeah, you have to go over to it. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I'll do that later. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't do it. Well done. Yeah, well done. I know. I, it was a really big fail. <clears throat> you failed your first your first test. Absolutely. It's supposed to get me to get up. <laughs> um, nope. Didn't do it. Best narrative, Last Guardian, Oxenfree, Uncharted 4, Inside, and Firewatch. For you, I bet it's between two of those. Um, it is, but there's a real clear winner for me, and it's Uncharted 4. Is it? More I'd pick than that over Inside. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Just because... I, I do have Inside now. I'm going to... Did you buy it? That. I did. Um, On the uh, PS4? Yeah. Cool. And the next, probably... Hopefully, I'll do To the Moon, and then I'll play Inside sometime after that. Hmm. Nice. Maybe we can so. talk about Inside at some point. <clears throat> yes. Yes. So... Uh, for me, it's Uncharted 4. Yeah. Uh, it was just a good conclusion. So. Right. And it uh, own game, it's its own a good game, in and of itself, but it's also a great conclusion to the entire series. So. Yeah, and I think it does more with narrative than Inside does. Um, I guess just in terms of traditional narrative. Um, Inside, you really have to. It's all environmental storytelling. You have to build it up yeah. yourself, um, which is. You know, its own kind of cleverness, but Uncharted 4 was just superb in the narrative. Um, Honorable mentions there. Blood and Wine. I know. That's a good one, too. That was actually... I'm surprised that's not even on the list. And maybe it's because it was a expansion? I don't know. Yeah. I would take that over Oxen for any day. Yeah. Um, I haven't played Last Guardian yet, but... Yeah. I'd probably drop Oxen for that list. <clears throat> um, last one I wanted to to bring up is their game of the year. So for GDC, they're going to um, debate between or deliberate between Uncharted 4, Overwatch, Inside, Dishonored 2, and Firewatch. Drop the bottom two. Yeah, I would too. 
I would. Put... I think I think the everything I've heard about Inside, I'll play it and make sure. But I'm pretty sure Uncharted 4, Overwatch, and Inside are would be, in my opinion, the contenders there. Yeah, I agree. Um, All for different reasons too. Right. That's the thing. Yep. Ah, it's just it's so hard because they're all such different games and all just amazing. Like I hit Overwatch before I came on mic tonight and just had the best match I've ever had. It was insane. Um, it's just so much fun and it's winning everyone's. You know, uh, uh, Uncharted Four won more Game of the Years than anything else, but Uncharted was second. Yeah. So just good good stuff this year for sure. Yeah, it's been a great year. Um, so that kind of takes us through the news, so we should move on to things we've been playing this week, and we'll start with you. I see something on your list that's on mine, too, and then something that's a surprise. I didn't know you were even playing the other game. So let's, <laughs> let's start with the one that we share. Uh, Diablo 3. So yeah, yeah. we got uh, the, the sh- what is it? Something of Tristram? The... Uh, Darkness of Tristram, I think. Yeah, Darkening of Tristram. Darkening, what that's right. The, the, the 20th anniversary event. Right. Uh, Which is only in January. Yep. And so I contemplated very hard back and forth. Do I want to play this on PS4 or PC? And I went PC because it's the start of a new season as well. Oh, so you could use your season character. Yep. I can just roll a new character in season. I can run through it as a level one character. I did. I did uh, Labyrinth 1 through 16. Yep. Beat the big guy. Mm -hmm. Um, Got some special rewards for doing it. Uh, did you get Wurt's leg? Uh, did I do Wurt's leg? That one? How did you get that one? I might have it. So yeah. it drops. I forget what it drops. Something drops that you have to take to. Um, oh no, that's where you have to get the black. I saw. Oh, the, the mushroom. The mushroom. The mushroom. I haven't done that part yet. Yeah, it's really easy. So I need to go do that. I need to go clean up a few of the the other ones. Yeah. You can get the calf, the the royal calf. Oh, I haven't done that one. That's I, part of Wurt's leg thing, so that you can uh, go to the secret cow level. Oh, dang. Where no, where no one attacks you. Right. But then you steal the secret calf, the, the royal calf, and that's why the cow king is mad in Diablo 2. Dude, I, need, <laughs> I didn't even know about that. It's really funny. It's like, uh, I saw someone that talked, like, how you had to go through it. You need to get Wurt's leg, though, first. Yeah, I, ha- I have that. I'm, I've so, got that. I yeah, have you, the... you're pretty much almost done. You don't have that much more to do. You'll just okay. have to read. Yeah, I'll check yeah. it out and figure it out. Cause, but, uh, yeah. yeah, it's Diablo 3. Um, it's a season character. I'm, my season character that I re-rolled is I'm at level 59 now. And Ooh. three hours of play, so I'll be 70 in another hour or two. Wow, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> um, there goes the explicit um, label for this podcast. Oh, I've already sworn a couple times. Sorry, Mother, so. Motherfucker, I did, the, I did the, <laughs> the same thing you did, and I finished that with level 22. Eight or twenty six. Well, yeah, I was twenty seven, twenty eight when I finished that. And oh, okay, and you kept playing. Went, I just went today. I just went and did a couple hours of playing, uh, doing bounties and um, other random things, some riffs. I need to go back and get that platinum. Like I'm only like five or eight trophies away. Uh, yeah, I want you know how to do it super fast. Yeah, um, I need. I need. I, there's guides online. Like I usually take now. This is my third season. I'll do. It usually takes me about four or five hours to get to from one to seventy. Right. But I see people online videos that say this is how you do it if you want to get one to seventy in three hours. Okay. Which requires a lot of just doing a lot of boring stuff. Right. It takes me longer because I'm doing more. You don't want to be bored. I doing things that at least interest me while I'm doing it. Right. So. That's the way you should play a game. I it's mean, it's a trade off. This... I'm like, I don't really care if it takes me a couple extra hours. Whatever. Right. Um. So yeah, I'm for I would. Still, it kills me when I decide to do a PC because I really want to play it on console, but I want seasons. And Blizzard, you're not listening to this, but come on, just get the seasons on console already. Like, and they're supposed to be coming soon. I thought they were going to drop with this update, but obviously not. No, maybe they'll drop with the Necromancer later in the year. I hope so. Oh, I can't wait for but, that. <clears throat> but yes, they need. I want seasons on console. If it was on console, seasons on console, I'd be playing on console all the time. Right. It's so but, natural on the console. I'm just really shocked, is. considering I put hundreds and hundreds of hours into the two on the PC. It's just, yep. It just feels good. Oh, they made a great, uh, a great uh, adaptation for the console. Sure did. I don't call it a port because it's very much an adaptation. Right. Um, and then yeah, the 
game that you're surprised at. I was, uh, for Christmas, I had been on my Amazon wish list forever, and I got Monster Hunter Generations. Nice. Because I have never played a Monster Hunter game um, before, and I really wanted to try it. And I've only put, like, an hour and a half into it. Um, and then I have to stop, because it's going to take... Even this one, Generations is supposedly, like, easier to get into. Holy hell, not easy to get into. Yeah. I need to read a lot on stats and weapons and, like, it, it's not terribly hard at the beginning. I just know I'm not being that effective. <laughs> like, so I, I need to learn how to play it. Basically. Well, and Generations is the one that's rolled in content from previous Monster Hunters, right? It's kind of a yes. remixed version or something. Yes, uh, and it also has Link in it. It does? It has a bunch of, it has a bunch of uh, Nintendo-only stuff. Uh, skins you can download. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah. Um, how are you doing with that game without a C stick? Uh, fine. Oh, okay. Um, it the the camera tracks well. It has a you can press a button to, so it centers the camera on you, uh, centers it behind you again. So you just kind of get used to doing that. Cool. I might pick up a Circle Pad Pro at some point. Yeah. Not a I new 3ds. Yeah. Oh, Circle Pad Pro is. Much $17 cheaper. Dollars yeah, on much Amazon. Cheaper. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll save 10 times the <laughs> cost. It, it, that's the right way to go. That's a good idea. Um, a new 3DS is cool, would be cool, but the Switch is coming out too, so why? why exactly. Bother with a new 3DS? And you'll probably um, see a Monster Hunter on the Switch eventually. Yeah. Um, so those are the two uh, major things. I've been playing a few things on my phone, like... Uh, I should feel guilty about it, but whatever. Um, this Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Oh, like the collectible card game kind of thing. It, it's kind of it's a collectible character game. Yeah. Uh, it has all the the horrible free to play stuff in it, but I haven't spent money in it, and I'm having a good time. So. Yeah, I've heard that about it recently. People like it. It's been out for it, quite good. a while. It, it has. Yeah. Uh, I remember messing with it. Um, it came out shortly before Force Awakens, like a month before force awakens last year so and then i played it for a little bit then and then i stopped and i picked it up probably about early december again before Mm -hmm. rogue one came out i was like oh let's try this again because i heard people talking about it again i was like okay and i it's something i can simply i can put like 15 20 minutes into it in a day while i'm commuting or on a bus or on uh on the boat and then finish and put it down for the rest of the day. Right. So, so it's kind of playing game, but it's also just kind of like a, a progress RPG in some ways. Well, you're collecting things. Yeah. So. You're just collecting and getting yeah. stronger. That's basically all it is. So. Yeah. That makes sense. That, I, I call that a game, gamified collecting basically. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Those are some good games. Yeah. It's been fun. Um, so, you are missing one game on your list. I added it. If you refresh, I added it. Did you? I added my shame. Did you? I did. Refresh, you'll see it. Oh, yeah. So It wasn't on there. I and know. I was like, oh. I forgot about it until three minutes ago. I, I, I added to, it. I have to call you out on that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get into that. So those are the games that you've been playing. Yep. Okay. Yep, so, there it is. There yep. it is now. Told you it's there. <laughs> I, and I will get into that. All right, so my games, I had quite a few because, as you mentioned, I'm off work and playing a lot of games. And the first one is Final Fantasy XV. And that's just, uh, I am way more invested in that game than I thought I would be. Exactly. Uh, I, Even I, as a person who liked Final Fantasies, I was unsure I was going to pick up this game. And then I watched streams. I was like, oh, that looks actually kind of fun. And then I played it myself. And I was like, man, I'm having way more fun than this than I actually thought I was going to. And I'm having way more fun with the side quests. Like, yep. I cannot stop playing side quests. <laughs> which is weird, because I, you know, I have a lot to play, and there's, you know, I don't have a lot to do right now in terms of work, but I will soon. So I kind of want to, like, get through the story. But, I, you know, I think I'm trying to take a different approach this year with games where I want to kind of juice the experience a bit more and like 
you know, platinum more games or you know play games more thoroughly. Yeah. And I'm definitely doing that. I'm uh, level 28 on chapter four. I mean, I just yeah. started chapter four. I haven't even talked to Aiden or whatever his name is to kind of start the whole thing. Yeah, I think I was pretty. I was like mid 30s before I progressed farther. I That's... beat the game, and I was level 53 when I beat the game. Right. And have you gone back and done the like the dungeons inside the dungeons? No, I haven't. Okay, because I got to that door, I was like, "What the hell is this?" And I realized, yep. "Oh, I don't want to open that. I can't." But you know, you can't. Right. Not yet. Um, yeah, it's one of the things I need to go back and uh, just finish off the uh, the few remaining things, some high level high level hunts that I wasn't able to do. Yeah. Because I just wasn't even close to level. Um, get all uh, different. There's like ways to get ultimate weapons uh, that you can't do until after the game. There's a bunch of content after the game, and there's a bunch of DLC coming out for the game too. So. Which I'm now interested in. And I didn't think I would be. And I'll focus on other characters. So. Then the four. It's the four, but there's a, a one for Gladio, which when you get farther into the story, you'll understand. Why. Right when they all split up. Did you already pass that point? No, but I know they do. Yeah, so there's a point where Gladio goes goes off. Right. And he's gone for a little bit, and the the DLC is going to have be that and. What's his sister's name? Uh, Iris? Iris? Iris, yeah. So there's some DLC that's going to focus on her. And there's going to DLC that will focus on Luna Freya and Ariana. Uh, who I don't know if you've met yeah, yet. Yeah, I don't know Ariana. Um, she's cool. I think you meet her in the next chapter. Cool. If uh, I ever start She'll show up. <laughs> yes, she'll show up. Um, she's cool. Um, I only just now started staying out at night. Oh yeah, staying out at night. You need to be a certain level to do that, though. Yeah. So, because you will just get murdered. Well, I really got into like the day-night cycle. Power. Well, I would like def- I would come in, you know, yeah. like it wanted you to. Yeah. Um, I can see that leveling up Gladio's um, survival will take forever to get the platinum. That then the fishing. I mean, the fishing's all right, but I to get to get that to level ten to platinum the game. Yeah, I think my survival by when I beat the game was at. Six or seven. Right, and you gotta get to so, ten. Ooh. Yeah, it, it it progressed faster than I thought it was going to. Yeah. Okay. So I don't. I think just run around a lot. Yeah, it's just it's the it's the fishing one that kind of you have to go out of your way to do. Yeah. Um, Which is the last trophy anyone unlocks before they get the, the platinum, according to the stats. I can see that. Yeah. Um, but it's just I I like the road trip. I like the bro trip. I like their interactions. They kind of get a little repetitive, but it's all right. Yeah. Um, I love the the mechanic when you travel between places where you could fast travel or you can just set it to auto and I just like I do something else. And oh, the I, auto is so good. Oh, it's so good. And then I rack up AP points because I yep. bought into that. Um, yeah, it's just there's so much variation in the battle, the wait, uh, waiting, whatever it's called, wait time or wait something. mode. Yeah, yeah wait, wait mode. mode is the way to go. Wow. Yeah. Because I, I was playing uh, regular and I was like, how I don't know how anyone can like go through all the options so quickly and i realized that i didn't have to no you can actually take a little time pick out what you want to do um yeah and i have noticed that as i got farther and farther into the game how much better i was getting at the combat like right. you just start to naturally kind of understand the rhythm rhythm of it you're like okay i should go on the offensive here press hard okay now i should be blocking a lot right and, like before there's even tells from the enemies that you need to, you just kind of get the sense of, uh, like I said, the rhythm of it. Yeah, if you uh, take a look at the Let's Play I did of the Sword in the Waterfall uh, dungeon, yeah, I was a damn fool. <sighs> you can see how bad I was. And then I, I didn't realize that the final mob was the boss before you get to this, the you know, the royal arm. So yeah, I was, yeah. I was nearly dead. I was like, I'm not going to make it past this boss and open the door, and it was just the arm. I was like, oh, okay, I guess that was the boss. <laughs> um, so I was just real dumb. So check out some of those let's plays. I'm just me being real dumb. <clears throat> um, next game I played was Diablo three. The day that that launched, I just played it. I loaded it up that night and ran through. Uh, I just meant to check it out and I just I did the whole run. Yep. Um, and it, you know it took I don't know it was like an hour and a half, two hours maybe less than that. Yeah, about that. Yeah, I did it with a witch doctor, a character I've never done before because I want to start moving toward the platinum. I, you attack people with frogs. <laughs> like, yep. It's a pet class. You do all sorts of crazy stuff. It is so uh, weird. 
Yeah. Like I don't usually play that way, so it's you know it's kind of nice to play in a different way of the game. Um, you know, not much more to say about that. I want to go back and do the cow level like you were mentioning. Yeah. Um, next game, to my great great shame, I played shame. a game called My Name Is Mayo. Um, have you heard about this game? Uh, I hadn't until you uh, linked it or. Oh, on my Twitter, the, you, the platinum yeah. trophy. Yeah. Yep. So I was, I was reading. Like, what What the hell is this? Oh my god. So I uh, I was reading a, a Reddit forum post or whatever where people were talking about like the easiest platinums on PS4, and they're talking about you know like Telltale games or whatever. And then someone mentioned my name is Mayo. It's the easiest platinum on the system. I was like, really? How easy? And I looked into it, and it's like 99 cents, and it's, it's a clicker. You you get trophies for clicking this mayo jar and dressing it up and clicking it. It's the dumbest experience ever. Um, I just I kind of felt embarrassed doing it, but um, I did it and I got a ton of trophies and I got a, <laughs> platinum. Got a platinum. I got a platinum for my most shameful platinum for doing this stupid thing. Um, and I realized I just paid ninety nine cents for a bunch of trophies and a platinum for a stupid online number that I don't use for anything. <laughs> yep. So that was, you know, it's really smart for the, kind of smart for the developers. Like, but that's a silly game that's pretty cheap for achievement hunters or trophy hunters, and they will probably buy it. The and fact that Sony put this, let this go up is kind of amazing to me. It really is. And it tells me, okay, if this game can have a platinum. Why don't some of these other small games have platinums like that are much more involved? How did this game get a platinum? I don't get it. I have no clue. It's like 90% of people who play this game platinum it, which is not how it's supposed to go with a platinum. No. So if anyone wants to pick it up, here's a tip for you. Um, You have to click at least 10,000 times to get the trophy. Um, And the X button is your click button, but so is the touchpad. And people are talking about if you get bored pressing the X, press the touchpad. Uh, You actually press them both at the same time. So the clicking goes by real quick it takes people i think two hours to platinum it and took me like 45 minutes to an hour <laughs> um i'm not proud but i do have that sweet platinum so there you, go. you can share that you can show that one off oh god um before we move on to my next game um to exercise my shame i'm going to give away a game this is a game for steam this is a steam key and here's your code d e a seven x J F W T J P I zero B V. And I believe it's a zero and not an O. Um, so D E A seven X J F W T J P I zero B V. And as always, please act quickly before the dev snaps up that code. It's true. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. Did you I see? I might own it. I you, don't know. You definitely don't own this game. hundred okay. percent guaranteed. Um, did you hear the unlock for the next uh, month? Twelve dollars no. for XCOM oh, Two. Oh yeah, you said something to that. Yeah, so that's I a jumped, great price. I jumped on it. <clears throat> um, well, I do the I do the monthly anyways. Monthly. Yeah, I just paid early. Um, they're doing a good job of uh, making it worth your while to keep it going. Yeah, I mean that this this month was really good. Had a ton of really good games. Um, another game I played this week was Monument Valley on my tablet. Um, I don't know if you've played Monument Valley. I have. I okay. played a lot of it. Whew, that game is rad. Um, I just... played all of it except the the base game. I didn't I haven't paid for the expansion or anything. Yeah, I'm just playing the base game. Um, and it's just so cool how you like change the perspective. Of, it's a puzzle game basically. Yep. You change the perspective and it's almost like an Escher picture. Yeah, it's the MC Escher of puzzle games. Exactly. Um, like those don't touch. You can't. Oh, there I go. Okay, I just solved the puzzle. Um, so I'm having a lot of fun kind of, I don't know, getting back into tablet games a little bit, um, yeah. kind of in preparation for kiddo. There's good stuff on there. There really is. Um, another one I played on my mobile device was Super Mario Run. I'm just still going through and collecting the secret coins and, you know, getting through the six worlds. Um, it's just, you know, I play it when I'm somewhere with a internet connection. Um, I don't know, just. It's a different kind of Mario game, and it's fun. It's just, yeah. it's, it's just dumb fun. <clears throat> Last one I played this week was To the Moon. We'll talk about that in February, but um, I played about 45 minutes. 
some things I like, some things I don't like, but I was definitely getting misty-eyed, and that was only 45 minutes in. I know where the game's going, and it's going to make me cry. So, um, How long is it total? Four hours. Okay. I'm probably just going to play through that on a single day or a single night. Yeah. I, I want to do, like, hour-long chunks, so I want to get through, like, I wanted to do one a week. Um, so we'll see if that's a good idea or not, considering yeah. this, if I forget the story, but I don't think I will. I've been taking some pretty good notes this time because I think that okay. I'll, I'll want to talk about it. Um, the things I liked and things I didn't. There are some really funny jokes in it too. Like for gamers, there's some Easter eggs and stuff in there. So it's 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 a funny one. Nice. Um, yeah, so those are the things I've been playing. This week I'm taking off, like I said, so I'll probably just play some Final Fantasy and a little bit of Overwatch tonight probably. <clears throat> yeah. And then get my NES Classic. I uh, snapped that up in the Best Buy when it was available for a couple of minutes, and that should be coming tomorrow, it looks like. Yeah, you should really just pack that. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I'm that pretty sure Greg would be interested in I seeing it, too. So. Say that. Yeah, I think Greg would like I wish I had bought a second controller. Um, I didn't Controllers think are probably something you can find. Yeah, right. I think. I could be wrong. They might be completely out, too. Well, I wonder if I can just use my... I think it's it's the, the plug-in is the Wii plug-in, so I might be able to use yeah. my controller here. That's true. Uh, yeah, I might bring that. Let's see. Yeah, so that's uh, the games I'm playing, and that's the news, and that's our discussion. Um, we will be back next week to discuss what Nintendo actually said during their conference. Yeah. I hope it's good news, man. Yeah, expect a Nintendo-heavy episode next week. Absolutely. A Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo. Nintendo. Can't wait. I'm really excited. I'm I excited. I, I hope they don't mess ex- it up. Crossing my fingers. I know. They've messed, they've messed up other things before so yeah i wish i could say no they won't mess it up it's fine trust nintendo oh god that's not a no. that's not a sentence i hear very much no oh yeah how the mighty have fallen uh, unfortunately all right man well thanks for your time tonight and we'll i'll all talk right. to you again next week all right take care all right folks see you later <laughs>